What is up, booktube? It is Monty, and today I'm here to do my February wrap-up, and I'm also going to include my March TBR, because I just have um, a handful of things to talk about, and as I was conceptualizing my videos for the week, it just made more sense for them to be in one video, so that's what I'm doing. We're just gonna live life on the edge, I guess. For the month of February, I'm doing this wrap up off the top of my head because I really, one of these things I don't actually have. Good to know, good to remember. Uh, but I didn't actually read that many titles in the month of February. I was not good about updating my spreadsheet, so I'm going to have to go back um, and retroactively try to handle that situation so I don't have like the number I spent saved at the library or any of that. But I did manage to finish a total of seven things no six things six okay so the first book that i read was hair love by matthew a cherry this has since been adapted into an oscar winning animated short um it was cute the cover you'll see over here i checked it out from the library um it was cute i appreciated it for what it was um which was a picture book and it was a really good picture book it is also the only book that I read in the month of February that featured black protagonists, so cue the moment of shame. But also, you know, there are 11 other months in the year. We still have 10 to go, so who knows what I'll be reading. I don't have to just read black things in February. No, I do feel a little bit embarrassed that I did not manage to get through. Um more things. I did try to finish Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert and I just hated, I hated those characters. I hated Chloe Brown. I hated Red. The moment I found out that Red had the word mum tatted on his knuckles, he instantly became, and I think I hallucinated that because I went back to try to find this passage in the book. Couldn't find it. But it also seemed too vivid a detail for me to have hallucinated. Um, but once I, that was in my brain, I could no longer imagine at any point in the novel, uh, Rhett and, and, and Chloe getting it on. Because who wants to get fingered by someone who has the word mum on their knuckles? Like, that's just, I'm good. I, I didn't, I didn't need it, but I wish Miss Hibbert all the best. I did like her writing style. Um, as of now, I don't have plans to pick up. I think it's like, take a hint, Danny Brown is the second one. I don't have plans to pick that up. I might pick up work for it, which was her, I think it's her only male male work. Um, I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. I do think she's a talented writer. It just, I don't think this one was in the cards for me. As for the things that I actively finished, let's get to those. So the first one was Yes, No, Maybe So by Aisha Syed and Becky Albertalli. I have a full review of this one, so I'll leave it linked up in the cards. I actually have a full review of everything else I'm about to talk about except for one of these things. So I probably won't spend a lot of time on this one. It was cute. It's like a political rom-com situation. I think that the canvassing aspects, the aspects where it's like, here are things that you can do in your community to be civically engaged that aren't voting um, was really the best part of this. Um, everything else I thought was pretty lackluster. Um, and I didn't like it. Like I said, I have a full review, so I'll leave that linked up above if you want more specifics. After Yes, No, Maybe So, I picked up The Best Laid Plans by Cameron Lund. This was sent to me by Penguin Teen. Um, it came in the cute pizza box mailer. I was very... it was cute. Um, the book, though, was not as cute as the mailer that it came in. I ultimately wound up giving this four out of five stars because I did enjoy Cameron Lund's writing, but this follows a our protagonist Keely who is freshly turned 18 it's her senior year of high school we follow her in like the last semester of that and she starts to develop this crush on a 20 year old college junior who was incredibly emotionally manipulative low-key sexually manipulative like it was really gross to read about did not appreciate it um alternatively she looks to her best friend to sort of help her lose her virginity um, in order to continue on in pursuing this relationship with this college junior guy. And he was arguably like a better friend. I really enjoyed their friendship dynamic. But the moments where Cameron Lund tried to make him an alternative romantic interest didn't quite work for me. And there's a third act reveal 
regarding that best friend that just sort of ruined any sort of potential romance. It didn't like it. So personally, it wasn't for me, but I do think it's cute. This is out on April 7th. Put in your hold to the library, check it out for yourself, see what you think. After that, I read what was arguably probably my most anticipated read of the spring summer time. Although I think technically it's still classified as a winter release. I don't think it's a technically a spring release. I don't know. I, I docile, but I can't even spare it. The review of this one is up, it's 47 minutes long. Grab your snacks, go watch it, go enjoy it. I give a very detailed account of what exactly bothered me and why exactly those things bothered me. Um, this one really put me through it. 12 out of 10, do not want to have to go like litigate everything. So I will leave my link to the Goodreads review down below just in case you don't want to sit through an hour long video right now. Add it to your watch later, do whatever you need to do. You can watch it on two times speed maybe. I don't know, don't usually do that myself. But this is allegedly set in a sci-fi near future. I say it's a near future, even though it's like a hundred years in the future. It's weird. Um, I don't think it's all that sci-fi. I don't think it really offers any kind of commentary on the takedown of capitalism or the sort of anti, like the non-consensual nature of the relationship. I think that it explores the non-consensual relationship aspects more than it does like trying to take down capitalism. I don't think there's really any kind of takedown of capitalism here. I don't think there's any kind of commentary on anything here. Um, overall, I think it was a well-written book. I think that it's addictively, like it's written in a way that compels the reader to continue to read, even in moments that are sort of uncomfortable. But at the end of the day, I think that it's kind of a hot mess of a book that doesn't really quite know where it wants to sit. And, um, I can't really recommend, like, in my review I said I still would recommend people to buy it. I still would recommend people to read it. Um, I did make the caveat in terms of buying it that I would wait for it to be on sale, so there is that. And focusing on positivity is exactly what I did when I moved on to my next read, which was my last read that I have with me, and that was More Than Maybe. And this is a cute uh, romance slice of life contemporary novel set in Michigan. I think it's set in Ann Arbor, um, and it's very heavily music-centered. Our main female protagonist, Veda, is sort of a... I think over the course of the novel, she becomes like the Sunday night manager at this local dive bar who's really known for discovering new upcoming talent. And our male lead, Luke Greenlee, is the son of a former English punk rock legend, superstar man type, um, who was running a podcast with his brother Cullen out of the bar that Veda works at. Um, so the two of them have sort of always known one each other and like the periphery and then one day at school they decide they Well, it's not really they decide but they just have well, I guess Luke does decide really can I can I can I figure out the plot? Um, they have a senior project type situation and they're going to work together on it and so They have to actually communicate now and so we get to see them and they're budding romance with one another uh, it was really cute. I'm not the biggest music fan. There's a lot of references in this. I don't think it's key for you to understand them. I feel like if you do understand them, then there's like a deeper level that you'll get the book on. But for me, it was cute. I gave it four to five stars. I think that it was probably the healthiest relationship <laughs> that I read all month long. <laughs> um, I didn't realize I'd read so many sort of like romance centered things, but I guess I did. Um, and I think this is probably the healthiest depiction of a romance that I read this month, and I really like it. This is out in May. Again, this was also sent to me by Wednesday Books. So shout out to Wednesday Books. I really appreciated it. It was definitely what I needed after reading Docile. I needed something that was light and fun, and this was both of those things. Um, so yeah, I do think this is another one of those you should add to your TBR. If it wasn't on there already and my air just kicked on i'm not gonna end the video here because i just want to wrap this up with my three graphic novels that i have checked out for the month of what is it march we're in march yes so for the month of march i want to get caught up on the sailor moon eternal edition so i have six and seven and then i also have batman the long halloween checked out there's some other books that i have planned in a sort of secret tbr video so those might get read those might not get read who knows um, fingers crossed to pray for me, but thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon with another video, but until then and until next time, bye.